Good morning. My name is Mike Fecto, youth programmer, Bitterford Recreation. I'm Brian Dunphy, an adult and outdoor programmer for Bitterford Recreation. And today we are going to talk about a little history of Bitterford Saco Rotary Park. Bitterford Saco Rotary Park is located in Bitterford at 550 Main Street. Um, this at one time was called the Bitterford Dump. In 1969, uh, two men that were very instrumental in the closing of this dump, a high school junior, Norman Eon, and a soccer resident, Rudolph Danis. Norman started a petition to close this dump because his dream was he wanted a recreational park. So he would go house to house getting signatures. And while he was doing that, he had a cardboard diagram of his vision of what he wanted this park to look like. Well, in July 1970, the city chained this entrance right here and gave the keys to the Bitterford Soccer Rotary Club as the Rotary Club pledged $50,000 to the construction of this park. This is how we came with the name Bitterford Soccer Rotary Park because of the Rotary Club. We're going to explore Rotary Park today and I'll show you all the different amenities that are available to, uh, to the public for, for use. Um, we have uh, a skate park, there's a teen center facility here, there's a dog park, uh, there's water access for fishing and boating uh, and swimming, there's a picnic grove, uh, there's recreational fields and some, also some trails as well. So lots of uh, different things to explore throughout the park today, so looking forward to it. Okay, here we are at the uh, skate park. At one time, this was an outdoor rink. They used to play high school ice hockey here, youth ice hockey, uh, men's and high school broom ball. And they used to have public skating. If you notice, this was a lighted outdoor rink. And I believe at one time, they used to have a Zamboni that used to clean the ice here, which people use throughout the winter. But whenever it snowed, people would have to shovel off the, the rink. So here we are at the uh, first of two play structures available at the, uh, at the Rotary Park. There's a, a couple of different elements here and just want to let everybody know that they are uh, tobacco free uh, areas inside the whole park. So that's inclusive of the whole park from Main Street all the way through. This place is home to programming for kids from sixth grade through seniors in high school. This building was built by students at a Bitterford, Bitterford Vocational School. Uh, at one time, they used this building for a warm-up shack for the skating ice rink and that, the tow, tow rope they used to have on top of the mountain. Uh, in 1996, this became the Bitterford Teen Center. Norman Eon, again, was very instrumental in the closing of this uh, Bitterford dump. Uh, because of the health hazards, environmental hazards, uh, with the burning of the rubbish. Norman started this petition back in 1969. In 1972, Norman died as he was working on his job in, on a granite cliff, and the cliff collapsed, and he was buried underneath the cliff. They dedicated this road and named it after Norman Eon, which is now the Eon Way. So here we are at the uh, Bitterford Dog Park inside the Rotary Park. Uh, this facility is open from morning to night or dawn to dusk. 
Uh, we have a big wide open space here. You can let your dogs off leash and uh, they have some amenities like the shelter up there. Uh, there's some obstructions for the dogs to play with. Uh, a couple of benches and picnic tables available for people to enjoy, uh, as well as some trees uh, that have been planted for, for shade. Uh, inside this big park, uh, a lot of wide open space and then we also have a smaller fenced in area for little dogs uh, that maybe can't play with the big dogs to enjoy. Now the whole park is maintained by volunteers. Uh, the Friends of the Bitterford Dog Park uh, has a volunteer uh, group and they may maintain the inside of the park and then the City of Bitterford uh, Parks of Arbor maintains the out exterior grounds outside the fences. This is called the Plateau Groups use this for big events, parties, picnics. The big users are the cross country teams and the Benefit High School cross country teams as this is a starting point for a lot of the uh, cross country matches. Uh, UNE in September always has a 15 to 20 college division three teams that come here and uh, have their invitational race and this is where they all congregate right here as a starting point. Another thing to mention here at Rory Park is 72 acres of land, so if you notice there's a lot of green space and a lot of area for people to do things over here at the park. We're getting up on top of the plateau now, up to the summit uh, of Rotary Park here. Uh, awesome views all around on, on all sides, panoramic views here. Uh, this is actually the site where the, the uh, rope tow would have brought the sliders and, and skiers uh, up to the top of the top of the hill here. So nice views of the Saco River uh, over onto the Saco side. And back in the distance behind us, you can probably hear the, uh, the main turnpike going through over there. Uh, and then you can see the, the dog park down this way and then over on the other side, the back side of the disc golf course as well. This is the uh, highest point right here where we're at, highest point of Rotary Park. Here we are uh, at the first Biddeford disc golf course. It's called the Riverside Drive. Uh, and this was created by a couple of volunteers who loved the game of disc golf and wanted to start something in, in the community. Uh, a shout out to Zach Boston and Brad Gagan, two guys that had visions of creating this golf course and with the help of the community and many sponsors and uh, fundraisers, they were able to create this nine hole uh, disc golf course. This is a free disc golf course open to anybody who would like to play. Uh, it's nine holes and we're going to walk to the first hole of this course. So we're down here at the uh, boat launch at Rotary Park. Uh, this is a spot that's great for doing a little fishing, uh, enjoying like a picnic. You can certainly launch your boat here. Uh, it's a concrete ramp and it's a deep water launch here. So you get a small boat here in the Saco River. Uh, gives you access from uh, the bridges in town, the Elm Street and uh, bridge upwards of the dams. And you can actually get all the way up to uh, the Skelton Dam. Uh, impoundment just below the Skelton Dam. So there's quite a good section of river here. Um, certainly it's an awesome section for canoeing and kayaking, uh, paddle boats, that type of thing. Uh, also fishing obviously along the banks here in Rotary Park. Uh, there's a bunch of different species that are available. Uh, the Saco River is actually stocked by the state of Maine. So there's some, some trout stocking that's done annually here. Uh, definitely want to recommend wearing a life jacket if you're out doing any boating uh, early in the season and, and every time you're in a boat. This is another spot here uh, along the riverbank at Rotary Park. It's actually the site of the old boat launch. And a lot of people use this area 
for fishing or uh, just enjoying a picnic by the water. It's a great spot to pull up a, a, a canoe or a kayak and, and get out and have a picnic. Uh, it's also an area where you can actually take your dog off leash uh, inside Rotary Park. It's one of the few areas um, that you can do that. So this area is available for that. So here we are now down at the Swimmers Beach at Rotary Park. Um, you'll find the uh, memorial to Norman Eon is here, memorial stone down here at the beach. Uh, this area is due to have lifeguards starting on June 15th um, for the swimming area. At that point, the bathhouse will be open, so there are uh, flush toilets that will be available at that point uh, for the swimming beach. And also behind us is a picnic grove, which is available for day use now. So there's picnic tables with uh, grills. You can bring charcoal down and trash cans provided. Um, so a shady spot to set up on a picnic table down there and come and enjoy a picnic now. That's available now for day use. Uh, there's also a playground with a couple of slides and some uh, other equipment for the, for the kids to use. Uh, plenty of parking uh, to bring your vehicle down. There are no costs to using this facility uh, at this point. Just a reminder that you're uh, swimming at your own risk if there's no lifeguards on duties. Uh, usually the lifeguards are here from 9 a.m. in the morning till 8 p.m. Uh, daily throughout the summer. We are here at uh, the field next to the river and this is the uh, Biddeford Youth Football Field and it was named after uh, David Redman. Uh, David Redman was an educator, a football coach at Biddeford High School for a number of years. And in 1997, they established this field called the David Redmond Youth Football Field. Um, Biddeford Youth Football, this is their home, uh, playing games and practices. They're also used by uh, Biddeford Youth Lacrosse, uh, Biddeford Little League T-Ball, uh, as well as we've had, we've had soccer camps here in the past, and other groups have used this field. Here we are at the John Martell Memorial Field who was a Biddeford High School athlete and graduate, who was a very competitive person that was a strong member in the Biddeford Soccer Softball League. John uh, brought out the best in everybody, always had a smile, was very competitive, and was just a fun guy to be around and compete against. And unfortunately, John passed away in a car accident. This field was named after John for all his dedication and hard work he did with the Biddeford Soccer Softball League. Not only was this field used for, uh, for years and years for the Men's Softball League and Biddeford Soccer, uh, but we also host lots of tournaments during the summer. Uh, we host the high school JV softball team during their regular season. Uh, we also have down here youth soccer in the fall. Uh, so our youth soccer fifth and sixth grade plays here. Uh, we have a bunch of travel baseball and travel softball leagues that will rent the field on weekends. There's other adult tournaments that are run here and the adults love this field because it's a 325 foot fence. Uh, there's 70 foot bases here. Uh, one of the best infields in the state of Maine and the grass is always nice and green here down in Rotary Park. By the uh, Redmond Field, we also have a sandy beach volleyball court. Uh, usually the nets are up in the summertime that people come and use. In closing, as you see, Rotary Park has a lot of green space and a great park to come to and just so many sporting events that you can do from swimming to softball to uh, just walking or running the trails. It's a great place to bring your family and enjoy the warm weather, exercise and also use the river to go swimming or fishing or boating. If you haven't been to Rotary Park, it's a good time to check it out and enjoy uh, this park. Like Mike said, so many free resources here that are available to the citizens here in Biddeford and, and to the public. Uh, awesome place to come and bring your family, enjoy the day, get some fresh air, uh, and, and take it all in. So uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.